Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great and welcome to another video. In this one, we are taking you to the picturesque prefecture of Akita. Akita is renowned for its rice and sake production and for being the birthplace of the Akita Inn. However, the prefecture also boasts a rich cultural heritage, particularly the unique Namahage Sedo festival, which was the main highlight of our trip. Along the way, we also had memorable experiences. So buckle up and join us on this exciting journey as we dive deep in the Japanese folklore. Let's go! We did a first stop at Karamatsu Shrine. Kadamatsu Shrine is a place of worship for safe childbirth and easy delivery, attracting prayers from all over the country. It is considered a powerful spiritual spot in Akita and is designated as a tangible cultural property of the prefecture. Kadamatsu Shrine is unique as the shrine building is located at a lower position, Kudalimiya, accessible by descending stairs rather than ascending the approach. Those bells, Yorokobi Suzu, or Bells of Joy are offered by people from all over Japan, whose prayers for children were fulfilled. The number demonstrates the shrine's great spiritual efficacy. The premises of the shrine are also home to ancient cedar trees, over 300 years old, and are designated as a natural monument. Next, on our itinerary, we did a brief halt at Kakunodate. In Kakunodate, you'll find one of the most well-preserved Bukeyashiki, or samurai district of the country, offering a glimpse into Japan's feudal past. The best time to visit, though, is probably spring as Kakunodate is also known for being one of Tohoku's most popular spots for cherry blossoms. On the way to our accommodation for the night, we drove along Tazawako, or Lake Tazawa, which is a scenic caldera lake and is in fact Japan's deepest lake with a depth of 423 meters. We stopped at the northern end of the lake to visit Gozanuishi Shrine. Gozanuishi means seed stone, and is said to refer to a stone where local lords used to come to admire the lake. The shrine is especially known for the view of its story gate that stands on the shore of Tazawako. The lake is associated with the legend of Princess Tatsuko, who, wishing for eternal beauty, drank the waters of the lake and instead was cursed and transformed into a dragon, becoming the lake's guardian. We then drove half an hour to reach Newto Onsen. Newto Onsen is a famous hot spring village located in the mountains of the eastern part of Akita Prefecture. It is a collection of eight local hotels, each with its own hot spring baths. The most famous of them is surely Tsuru no Yu, in operation for over 300 years. It is famous for its mixed gender rotenburo and cloudy milky hot spring waters. Though usually fully booked and probably animated, we opted for the more secluded Ganiba Onsen. <laughs> Ganiba Onsen takes its name from the abundance of river crabs that inhabit the nearby streams. Our evening began with a soothing soak in the indoor bath, easing away the day's travel. Dinner followed, a culinary delight meticulously crafted with local ingredients. The highlight was a miso-based crab hot pot, complemented by Kili Tampo, Akita's famed toasted rice sticks. Our belly is content with the splendid Kaiseki meal. We ventured to the outdoor bath located after an enchanting walk from the main buildings. It is a mixed-gender rotenburo, but we were lucky to have it for ourselves. 
There, we could experience the magic of a yukimiburo. We spent a restful night in our comfortable room, and in the early morning, we ventured once more to the outdoor bath. <laughs> After savoring a delicious traditional breakfast, it was time to set off for our next destination, Aniski Resort. On the way, we quickly stopped at Matagi no Sato. The Matagi are traditional winter hunters in the Tohoku region, particularly renowned today in the Ani area of Akita Prefecture. Their culture boasts a rich history spanning over a thousand years. Even today, Matagi hunters continue their age-old tradition of hunting deer and bear. <laughs> We drove another 45 minutes to reach Moriyoshiyama Aniski Resort. Aniski, I've reached Aniski. You have a lot of food, right? No. Moriyoshiyama, or Mount Moriyoshi, is a popular destination for its excellent skiing conditions, but it is also famous for having a rare natural formation called Jushio, more commonly known as snow monsters. It costs 2,000 yen to take the gondola, which will take you up the mountain. The gondola ride itself offers some spectacular views on the snow-covered landscape. It takes about 20 minutes to reach the top, where the gondola staff will provide you with boots and poles. <laughs> After climbing a steep slope, we access the area where the Jushio form. The Jushio, literally meaning frozen trees, is a fascinating phenomenon of trees that become encrusted with heavy layers of snow and ice. The unique shapes formed by the harsh winter weather and strong winds give the trees a monstrous appearance, making them look like surreal, frozen creatures. This is a rare phenomenon that can be witnessed in only few locations in Japan, with Moriyoshiyama being one of the prime locations, along with the more famous Mount Zao in Yamagata and Mount Hakoda in Aomori. <laughs> The weather suddenly changed, catching us off guard as the thick fog enveloped our surroundings. We decided to return to the foot of the mountain, where we enjoyed a quick lunch before hitting the road again to ensure to be on time for the evening's festivities. We had two hours and a half of driving to reach the Oga Peninsula. The Oga Peninsula is known for its dramatic cliffs and rocky coastlines projecting into the Sea of Japan, but it is particularly renowned for hosting the traditional Japanese folklore of the Namahage. The Namahage are a kind of demon-like beings portrayed by men wearing fearsome masks made of wood or papier mache painted in vivid colors with fierce expressions. They also don straw capes named Kede and carry wooden knives or cleavers. The costumes are designed to be intimidating, to help convey the seriousness of their warnings. The Namahage tradition is a New Year's ritual. In winter, spending a long time around the hot open hearth causes the hands and feet to blister. In Akita dialect, these are called Namomi. Peeling off the blisters, Namomi Hagi, is a metaphor for avoiding laziness, and over time, the word became Namahage. So on New Year's Eve, Namahage would enter homes uninvited, shouting phrases like Hey, 
Let's go! Looking for laggards with blisters and threaten them to shave those with their knives. They symbolically scold the residents, particularly targeting children and young people, encouraging them to work hard and behave well in the coming year. In return, the households offer food and sake to the Namahage, who bless them with health and a good harvest in the following year. <laughs> the legend of Namahage varies from region to region, and there are few theories about the origins of the Namahage of Oga. Some are linked to Shinto rituals of the Yamabushi, others considering the Namahage as mountain deities. A funny theory is stemmed from a foreigner who washed ashore and was perceived as an oni due to his strange appearance and language. A fourth theory originates from a legend involving Emperor Wu of Han, but we'll talk about this one more in details later. In recent years, the Namahage tradition has gained popularity beyond the Oga Peninsula, especially since this tradition has been designated as a UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage in 2018. Oga Kanko Hotel. Finally arrived in Oga. We checked in at our accommodation for the night, Oga Kanko Hotel, and headed right away to the main highlight of our journey. The Namahage Sedo Festival. We decided to go by bus, paying a fee of 2000 yen per person, including entrance to the festival. You can go by car, but be aware that parking is limited. Nowadays, the Sedo Festival is probably the most notable event of the Namahage tradition, held annually on the second Friday, Saturday and Sunday of February at the Shinzan Shrine in Oga. The festival consists of a sequence of ceremonies that not only showcases the fierce Namahage, but also provides a deeper understanding of their role in local culture. The ceremonies unfold one after another, and I must admit it was challenging to shoot videos of each event due to this significant crowd. Everyone was kind of elbowing their way through, eager to take pictures. Despite the challenges, there were several highlights. One of the most notable was the Namahage empowerment, where young men dressed in their kede received masks imbued with the spirit of the gods. Through this ritual, they transformed into Namahage. and disappeared in the mountains. Next, we witnessed a reenactment of the Namahage folk tradition observed on New Year's Eve throughout Oga City. Following this was the Namahage dance. Unfortunately, I couldn't shoot videos from a close position as photographers had already secured the front spots even before the festivities began. Instead, we could enjoy the performance on a giant screen. After the dance, a local band dressed as Namahage performed taiko drums, electrifying the atmosphere. The next event was undoubtedly the festival's climax. Namahage, holding torches, descended from the snowy mountain's darkness and paraded through the shrine grounds. The divine messengers received the cup of sake before climbing back up the mountains. <laughs> Lastly, the Namahage made a final appearance, mingling with the crowd. They playfully searched for bad kids and might have traumatized a few. <laughs> but also pause for commemorative photos with the spectators. <laughs> Back at the hotel, it was time for dinner. Oga Kanko Hotel offers a late dinner service during the Sedo Festival. <laughs> <laughs> We were served a delightful kaiseki meal in a private room. A 
highlight of the Oga Kanko Hotel is its hot springs. The hotel features two bathhouses, one on the ground floor and another on the top floor, offering breathtaking views of the Oga Sea. The breakfast was a mix of Japanese and Western style buffet, but we didn't really enjoy it as we came late. We spent more time enjoying the bath. <laughs> As we checked out, we were greeted by an amahage. <laughs> adding a memorable touch to our departure. We returned to the Shinzan Shrine area to peacefully visit the Namahage Museum, as it had been quite crowded the previous day, just before the festival. But not the entrance is free if you have tickets for the festival. I used the footage I captured there to illustrate the Namahage tradition explained earlier in the video. If you want to learn more about Namahage, be sure to visit when you're in Oga. There, you can experience a reenactment of the Namahage tradition, similar to the one you can see during the festival, and explore extensive exhibits detailing the origins and history of this fascinating folklore. From the museum, we drove for 15 minutes to reach Nyudozaki, or Cape Nyudo. Located at 40 degrees north latitude, Cape Nyudo, the northernmost point of the Oga Peninsula, offers breathtaking views of the Sea of Japan. The Latitude 40 degree monument, built in 1990, commemorates this location. Sami, the 28 meter tall Cape Nudo lighthouse, first lit in 1898, has been designated one of the 50 great lighthouses of Japan. It is worth noting you can visit it and there is a showroom inside, but we didn't stay long due to the harsh cold winds. Oh, petit noir, uh, kawaii, c'est we drove 30 minutes to reach Akagami Shrine Goshado. To access the shrine, we must climb a staircase of 999 stone steps. This staircase is steeped in legend, closely linked to the origins of the Namahage. According to legend, Emperor Wu of Han came with five demons disguised as bats, demanding young women as sacrifices. The villagers challenged the demons to build a 1,000 step staircase in one night, promising to continue sacrifices if they succeeded. As dawn approached, a rooster crowed and the demons fled, believing they had failed. One of the theories of the origins of the Namahage tradition began here. As it is said, the villagers were imitating the demons on New Year's after they stopped coming. After 20 minutes of climbing, we reached Goshado. Goshado consists of five pavilions aligned side by side, designated as an important cultural property of Japan. Originally a Buddhist temple founded by priest Enin in 860, it became a Shinto shrine in 1216. The current buildings were rebuilt in 1710. Upon the legend, each pavilion enshrines one of the five demons from the 999 step story. Regardless if you believe the story or not, the sight of Goshado standing in serene alignment amid the forest makes the climb up the rugged stone steps truly special, offering a sense of connection to the ancient tales. To conclude our journey, we made one last stop at Michi no Eki Ogare in Oga City. Throughout the festival period, Sedo Light, a satellite matsuri of the Sedo Festival, takes place here. You can enjoy food stalls and taiko drumming by the same band that performs at the Sedo Festival. performance rivals that of the main festival. As the weather suddenly turned bad, it felt like a sign that it was time to head to the airport. Our first trip to Akita filled our hearts with incredible memories. We discovered the splendid region, from the snow-capped peaks of Mount Moriyoshi to the heartwarming and poetic Yukimiburo of Newton Onsen. We also uncovered a profoundly rich culture the Sedo Festival left a lasting impression on us. From the meticulously crafted costumes to the vibrant performances and rituals, we were amazed by the Oga community's unwavering commitment to preserving their heritage. <laughs> we will definitely return, as there is still so much more to explore in Akita.
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be working on the next one soon. Hopefully it's not gonna take too long. But uh, in the meantime, don't hesitate to check our previous videos. And until then, take care. See you in the next one. Peace.